Let's look at the example that with the uh, linear transformer uh, embedded in the circuit. And here, this is the linear transformer in the circuit. And we just model that and the couple inductor. What we are trying to find is, uh, is I sub one, this current from the source. So everything in phasor, although I have 100 volts, this is not DC, you should think of this as 100 with zero phase angle. Uh, zero degree phase angle. Um, this is the uh, AC signal, although we don't really know what the amplitude because our, here we give the things in terms of JXM, JX1, and JX2, right? So JX1 is 10, X1 is 10, X2 is 100 ohms, XM is 25 ohms, right? So this is a circuit. And uh, let's see how we're gonna approach this circuit. Let's see, um, if you really think about it, we really have four, four unknowns, right? So I1, I2, V1, V2, right? So we only need to know one, but we still need to, to write four equations to really solve any one of them, right? So we can write two equations in terms of the, um, uh, the mesh equations. So let's choose the direction, the clockwise direction for this mesh and we choose the counterclockwise direction for the second mesh. And the reason for that is if I choose this one, this the mesh current gonna be equal to I1, right? The for second one, the counterclockwise direction that my current I sub two gonna be the mesh current for the second mesh. And so I don't need additional mesh current mesh um, current uh, variables. And based on the uh, we, we write the mesh current equation, if you still recall, uh, we write the mesh current equation uh, using mesh equations using the KVL, right? So we, write, we count the voltage drops um, that across the non-source elements, and that should be equal to the voltage rise of the sources. And here, luckily, we only have voltage sources, so that's the easiest case for uh, the mesh equations, right? So let's write the first mesh equations. And so the voltage rise is gonna be equal to 100. So we put 100 on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we have the voltage drop across the 50 ohm, that's gonna be 50 times I1. And the voltage drop across the um, primary winding of the linear transformer, that's a V1, which is add V1. And the voltage drop across this negative J75 capacitance impedance, and that's gonna be equal minus J75 times the total current. The total current is gonna be equal I1 plus I2, right? Because both I1 and I2 gonna flow through this. Uh, or you can also use the mesh currents, right? So you have two mesh currents flowing in the same direction, so you add them together. And for a second mesh equation, and that's easier because we don't have any source there. And you just uh, add the uh, 500 ohms times I2 plus V2 and minus J75, I1 plus I2, right? And these are two equations. The other two equations comes from the linear transformer itself, the terminal uh, quantity, the terminal equations. And since I1 and I2, one flows into the dotted terminal and I2 actually flow into, flows into the undotted terminal, so therefore the equations we would have their flux um, subtractive. So we can write the equation that V1 is gonna be equal I1 times the JX1, which is J10, and the um, uh, the mutual reactance is 25, so that's minus J25 times I2 because the I2 is going into the undotted terminal. And V2 is going to be equal to I2 times J10, J100, right, minus J25 I1. And these are the four, four by four uh, equation. We need to solve for, um, we need to solve for uh, x1. So 
what we do is we just substitute these two equations into the first two and replace the v to v1 by by these um, terminal equations. Let's see uh, if we can solve by hand. So we got a 550i1 plus j10i1 minus j25i2. Uh, so this is for the v1, right? Minus j75 times i1 plus i2. That's still equal. That's equal to 100. And second equation, we have 500 i2 plus v2. V2 is j100 i2 minus j25 i1, and then minus j75 i1 plus i2. That's equal to zero. Right. So uh, let's work on the second equation. Let's see if we can get I2 and so we can substitute I2 into the first one. Maybe we should first work, uh, work on the first a little bit more, right? So let's see, um, collect the common terms for I1 and I2. Let's do that first. And let's see, we have uh, 50, the first equation, 50 um, plus J10 and also minus J75, so I just minus J65. For I1, and for I2, I have negative J25 minus negative J75, that's minus J100, I2 equal to 100, right? And then the second equation, let's see, if we collect the terms for I2, uh, I have 500 plus, how many I have? So I have 500, uh, plus uh, J100 minus J75, that's uh, plus J25 I, uh, I2, and my, uh, so minus J100 I1 is equal to zero. So from this second equation, I got I1 is equal to, I got I2 because I want to eliminate I2 and so I can find I1. So I2 is going to be equal to J100. I move it to the other side, divided by 500 plus J25 times I1, right? So therefore I can, now I can substitute, replace I2 in the first equation. So I'm going to get uh, 50, 50 minus J65, times I1 minus J100 times minus, uh, minus J100 times J100 divided by 500 plus J25 I1, that's equal 100. And J times J is equal negative one, so I can just uh, replace this by plus and what I get here is I1 is going to be equal to 100 over 50 minus J65 and plus 100 square over 500 plus J25. And luckily I calculated beforehand the, the answer is 1.04 and 43.3 degrees. These are these many apps, right? So that's the solution. So I also calculated using Python to show you the steps I did. Um, so I use the Python and calculate by hand. Okay, first I calculate by hand. Uh, I use this, I just use the basic uh, equation. And so, um, so this is the I derived it until here, and then, uh, then I just use the basic equation to calculate uh, I1. I call I11 because I have uh, I1 reserved for the uh, for additional alternative method to calculate. So uh, this is the uh, the result. The angle is 43.3, and uh, the amplitude 1.039 something. 
And uh, also, I can solve this equation simultaneously for equations. I don't calculate anything by hand. So I can solve this. And this is solution I solved by hand. Um, I just want to compare this is solved by hand. And just compare the uh, this is solved by the equation, by the uh, solvers. And this is solved by hand. You see their rectangular form is the same. right? And because I use a symbolic solver in the same pi, and very hard to convert that uh, rectangular form to uh, to the polar form. But anyway, I compare the rectangular form. You can see they're the same. Okay, so this answer absolutely correct. Uh, the next, I'm going to show you the uh, equivalent circuit, the T equivalent circuit. Stay tuned. Uh, see you in a moment.